Welcome back to Wild Ginger Hand Weaving. Today's video is going to be a little bit different. My first mug rug tutorial showed how to get a zigzag pattern by cycling through three colors on the four sheds of 2-2 bound weave. Instead of a simple zigzag, we can get a huge variety of diamond patterns like these by periodically reversing the direction of treadling from 1, 2, 3, 4 to 4, 3, 2, 1 and back again. And the order of colors too, for example, from dark medium light to light medium dark whenever you switch direction. Now, you can change direction at any point. In other words, any shed, 1, 2, 3, or 4 can be the pivot point. But which one you choose will have an effect on the color design and on the texture of the bound weave. So today I'm going to weave a sampler with all four turn types to see how they work and what they look like. Stick around to the end and I'll compare them all side by side and flip the sampler over to explain what's happening on the back. We'll start out by making the pivot on shed 4. When it's time to turn the corner, treadle 1, 2, 3, 4, 3, 2, 1. What jumps out with this turn type are those little dots of weft that cover only one warp thread. They usually disappear when they're covered by a long float in the next row, but when you make this type of turn, they're exposed and become part of the pattern. For the next type of turn, we'll add one extra pick on shed 1 to be the pivot point between treadling up and treadling down. So to make this type of turn, treadle 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 4, 3, 2, 1. In this turn, the extra pick on shed 1 adds in the long floats that are needed to cover up those dots. The effect is like a string of little eyes joined by a single line. For the third turning method, we'll keep going one pick further and pivot on shed 2. So to do this, treadle 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 1, 4, 3, 2, 1. Instead of a single connecting line, this type of turn makes two connecting lines between the little eyes, which you might find looks a little more symmetrical. Also note that as more picks get involved in the turn, the pattern starts to flatten out a bit and soften into wavy lines more than spiky diamonds. To make the final turn, we'll pivot on shed 3. Treadle 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 2, 1, 4, 3, 2, 1. 
to make the final turn type. The look of this one is a lot like the last, but with a drawback. This turn is most likely to expose the warp threads in the gap between subsequent picks on shed 1. Keep an eye out and you'll actually see the white warp threads peeking through on the woven sample. Now that my sampler's all done, I'll make some final observations. Here I have the front side on the left and the back side on the right for comparison. The colors are in different places, but the texture on the back is actually flipped around too. Basically, A on the back has the same texture as C on the front and vice versa. B on the back has the same texture as D on the front and vice versa. So remember those warp threads peeking through with the last turn type we did? This means you may get them peeking through on the back of your work too if you use the B-type turn, unless you use an extra hard beat. That's fine, but beating too hard will tend to flatten out the curves of the pattern and make it super stiff, so you may not always want to do that. A and C make a great pair without those potential drawbacks, as long as you like those little weft dots being part of the pattern. Thanks for watching! Like, comment, and subscribe for mug rug patterns, how-tos, and explorations of weave structures. I hope to see you back in the next video.